Good morning, good morning, good morning. How many of you know we serve a mighty God? And let's add to it that he's a mighty good God. He's a mighty great God. He is a mighty God. He, he can do anything but fail. He's all powerful. He's more powerful than any military regiment. He's more knowing than all of the intellects in the land. He is omnipresent. He's present down in the submarines, in the lower parts of the oceans. He's present in the heavens. He is present everywhere. D David said, I, I can't escape him. If I take the wings of the morning and fly away, he's there. If I go to the lower depths, he, he, he's there. What a mighty God that we serve. And that's if you serve him. I'm not talking about if you placate him or you, you just honor him when you want it, um, when you want to do that. But how many of you know this morning that you know that you know that you know that he is a mighty God? Good morning to all of you. Thank God for those of you who have um, logged in to live streaming. We praise God for you this morning. I'm Pastor Monica Lowe Howard of the New Day Church of Christ, Washington, D.C., now in Largo, Maryland. We bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that's within me, bless his 
holy name. This is the fifth Sunday of the month of May. And tomorrow we will celebrate Memorial Day. And it's more than just cookouts and um, festivities and going to the beach and going to the swimming pool. But we want to be in remembrance of the men and women in the armed services, those who have given up their lives, those who are even now doing things to help others and to help make others' lives more um, enriched. So we want to salute today and say happy Veterans Day to, to all um, veterans across America. We thank God for your um, service. And we're so glad about it. Amen. Amen. A amen. So whatever you do tomorrow, I need you to pause to just um, remember them. It's good to, to remember. Listen, in the last couple of weeks, it's just been tumultuous. It's it's been a state of chaos and just this disillusionment in the land from the those massacred in Buffalo, uh, New York, just simply in the parking lot, simply in the store shopping, getting groceries as all of us do from time to time and to be gunned down by 18 year older who grandma used to say this, that even wet behind the ears that he would uh, be a part of a conspiracy of hatred and um, venom and vengeance. And then a few days later, the gunning, the shooting, killing of one of the Asian descent in church trying to worship God and the people had to gather and rally trying to fight their own fight as if they are law enforcement. And then last week, I'm telling you, last Tuesday, and it's been um, troubling to my spirit. And I'm sure that all of us, whether you're a retired educator or you're an educator right now, um, that that's something to, to deal with within our spirit, to see 19 children helpless be gunned down and slaughtered like dogs. And there are two teachers who attempted to shield them with their own bodies. It's troubling to me because of my over 30 years of um, operating in educational realm. Those two grades, particularly second and third, were my focus years. My focus grades, I taught them more than any other years. A couple of years I did fourth grade, but second and third, my emphasis. And even now, I help um, assist in the second grade realm. So that just took me for a loop that messed me up for a couple of days. And so we want to be prayerful about um, what's going on in Uvalde, um, Texas. We have to be careful that the numbers of COVID-19 are going up. COVID is not over. And I know people want to be out and about around friends and family having cookouts and other large gatherings, but the numbers are going up. 
CDC is asking that you willingly will put your mask back on so that um, you won't, um, they won't have to get to maybe mandating it again. Prince George County Public Schools, where I work, they never released the mask, but the Philadelphia public schools have now put their children and staff back in um, their masks. There is trouble in the land. Monkeypox now has entered um, the United States of America, a disease that's usually confined to um, Europe here. It has now tiptoed in, but the Bible said there'll be pestilence and diseases and other things to enter our land. And so we need to know people of God, we can't just be so complacent and act like it has nothing to do uh, with me. Deception and lie, a lying spirit. He's heavily in the land. And as I told the media team this morning, it's in the kingdom of God. We're not talking about unsafe folks, y'all. We're not talking about people that know not Christ. We're talking about all of us residents, citizens in the kingdom of God. We, we tell lies quicker than the old people used to say the cat can bat its eye deception and then we want to be foolish enough to believe that we can trick somebody else you tell one story one lie one week in the next week you you're trying to justify it and you're trying to tweak it and you're trying to turn it around don't you know and haven't you heard that our god never slumbers nor sleeps and he hears everything that we say and sees everything that we do. And we're going to have to give an account for that. And then how dare you get mad and troubled and upset with the persons who don't want to go along with your lie, who does not want to um, be a part of your scheme and your lying and your deception come on listen i'm just doing a chat with you this morning but it's real and it's it's serious because the media team said to me people that just want stuff yes and they were saying in a particular denomination people are paying money so they can be elders or pastors or or ministers i said listen <laughs> Media team, don't fool yourself. It's not just in that denomination, but it's across our denominations that we're not only um, paying money, but we doing all kinds of hoopla and God said and, 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 and the Lord said and the Spirit said. But I'm here to tell you this morning, as I told someone last week, if there's no confirmation of a prophecy you better you better look at yourself and check it twice and see if it's real or not because a prophecy is always confirmed and the lord the spirit of the lord he chooses who and what he wants to use to confirm so don't be telling me that you got a prophecy and you're going to do this that or the other just go on and say, this is what I want to do. If you want to be crazy, just say, I want to be crazy. Don't the spirit of the Lord, because the spirit of the Lord, I'm here to tell you, will never give us anything contentious, chaotic, or confusing. And if it's any of those things tangled up in it, it's not of God. Did y'all hear me? It's not of of god so you know we're gonna pray in a few minutes
because this is just crazy. And I'm just concerned how so many of us are dabbling and dwelling and dribbling in deception and and lies. And it, it it's to the point that it's it's pushing you to just be lagging in integrity and lagging in honesty and can't nobody trust you and that's an awful place to find yourself in when can't nobody trust you because you you just tell lies you you just doing cover-ups you trying to justify and the lord said and god said and the spirit said and I don't care what the people of God said. I know what the Lord told me and he told me. And, and it's just a mess. Amen. So we're going to pray this morning because it's such a spirit of deception and lies and a lack of integrity in the land. You ought not to want to operate in that because it's not going to come to a good end. Might be flying high right now might be declaring and testifying my prayers have been answered but if it's got some um irrational deceptive uh spirit attached to it it's not going to come to it a good end next saturday i'm inviting you to tune in with me the Lord has blessed me now to begin my own radio um, broadcast under DMV Powered um, Gospel, where I was the guest last month, or May 14th. But since then, the producer and owner of the network has invited me to every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will be doing my own um, broadcast. And it's easy enough because you just dial in on your phone and you can hear me. If you don't have that information, you're welcome to email us and we will um, send you a banner. But come on and nestle in with Daddy God beginning next Saturday morning at 11 um, a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You're still in the house on Saturday morning around that time. You're just getting up. You may be eating some breakfast or just milling around. And I'm inviting you to join in. It's not a show. It's a broadcast to promote and proclaim the word of God. Amen. Somebody say amen. And then next Sunday morning, we'll be celebrating Pentecost, 50 days after our Lord Jesus the Christ has been resurrected. And he told them to just wait and stay put. The Acts of the Apostles, stay put. And the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and empower you. He's not it. He's not a force. He's not something sad. He's the third member of the triune Godhead, the Holy Ghost. In later years, we now say the Holy Spirit, but he is the same one. The Holy Ghost, and so coordinated by Minister Shane Sorrell and Deacon Denisha Sorrell, they will present to us next Sunday morning so that we can all be in celebration. Even though we can't see each other, I'm asking that you would wear something red or white, or red and white. It's your choice, red or white, or red and white. Let me say red and white so that you can have a little bit of red for the blood and white for um, purity on uh, next Sunday. Would you do that? Can you remember that we're going to be doing red 
and white, something red, something red and white. Next Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, somebody shout and holler, hallelujah. Pentecost Sunday, next Sunday, June the uh, 5th. It will be at the start of our broadcast that we will acknowledge and recognize the Holy Ghost's presence in our lives. Amen. 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 I'm just led for us um, to pray and I'm serious as, as um, I think it's Denisha Sorrell is going to pray, but then we would pray because as I said, there is a spirit of deception and and lying in the land. There is so much chaos and um, confusion in the land, just troubling that Uvalda um, Police Department would lie and cover up. That for 12 minutes, they left him, the shooter, uncovered outside where they could have took him down while he was busy shooting at people at the few standing outside the funeral home. And then he entered the building, school building, unimpeded because somebody propped the door open. We're not supposed to have doors open. We have to stay focused. We have to stay sober and alert. And then... The officers in the hallway for over an hour, children calling out on their, on their phones and the phones of the teachers saying, listen, come in, get us. We're still alive. It's just a few that are uh, dead. One little girl, when she called, kept calling, it was only about eight or nine children. We don't want anybody's life to be snuffed out. But at that time, it was only eight or nine children. But they meandered in the hallway and and just lying and no, we don't want to go in. And fear made them not go in because that young man had an assault um, tool, gun, and they only had handguns. And so I'm sure that chief of that unit felt like my life may be taken or the lives of my men and women and so we don't want to go up against um, an assault a rifle. But listen, they weren't thinking. Because if you wait till after 19 children are slaughtered and two teachers, and then you're going to get the maintenance guy to open the door, why do you get the maintenance guy to open the door from the beginning? Where was the maintenance guy? And if he wasn't on duty, shame on him. He should not be having no job after this. If he was supposed to be at work and he's somewhere else. I'm just saying if he was, because if they got him to open it later, they should have got him to open it. Because protocol says for every police department across this nation, the protocol says you're supposed to within 12 to 15 minutes make all attempt to take the shooter out. And they waited over an hour. And so it's praying time because then they lied about it. They covered up, they justified, they cursed and said all manner of evil against others who were questioning them. The parents outside were saying, go in, go in and rescue our children. Let us go in. Some of the parents that were armed was like, we ain't scared because we'll do anything for our children. So it's praying time. Deacon Denisha is going to lead us in prayer, followed by a congregational um, hymn, and then I'll be ready to preach. Shout amen. Thank you, Jesus. We still got the word. Amen. Oh, Lord God, we come to you this morning, Lord God, with hearts of hurt, God, hearts of pain, God, hearts that do not understand, oh God, what is going on in this land. Lord God, but we know that in your word, oh God, that it says that, Lord God, we don't know 
we don't know the the ins and outs, God, because only you are omnipresent, God. You are omnipotent, God. Lord God, you're everywhere and in every place, oh God. Lord God, so today, oh God, we come, God, with hearts of submission, God, with hearts pleading, oh God, unto you, oh God. Lord God, we are crying for help, oh God, in these troubling and unseen times, oh God, where, Lord God, we just don't know what to do, oh God. Lord God, your word says, seek my face, oh God. So we come today, oh God, to seek your face, God, in, in this time of, of trouble, God, in this time of heartache, God, in this time where so many are hurting, oh God. Lord God, because of violence, oh God, in the land where people think it's okay, God, that it's the order of the day, God, that it's it's all right to take one another's lives, oh God. Lord God, to take children's lives, oh God. Lord God, we come today, God, because your people are hurting because we can't even gather in your household, God, in the house of the Lord, oh God, to praise and worship you without someone coming in with a hateful heart, with an evil spirit, oh God, to take out someone's life. Lord God, we come today, Lord, seeking your face, God, asking for your comfort, your support, oh God, your your tender mercy, God, your loving arms, oh God, to surround us. Lord God, we know that we are your children, God. And Lord, we come to get today, God, because you love your children, oh God. Lord God, we are in mourning, oh God, for the many lives that have been lost over these few weeks, God, from elders to little children, oh God. Such a wide range of lives, God, that have been snuffed out in such a little amount of time, oh God. Just doing the ordinary, everyday thing, God, to go to the grocery store, God, just to pick up things for the week, oh God to go into the house of worship, God, to praise you, oh God, to go to school, oh God, to learn more and more, and to educate the young, oh God. And yet, Lord God, evil is rampant in, in taking out our lives, God. Lord God, we ask for peace, oh God, in these hearts that are hurting, oh God, and each of these situations, God. Lord God, we ask for comfort in their lives, oh God. And Lord God, we ask for salvation and deliverance, oh God, for any of those who don't know you, God, so that they will be able to have that comfort that only comes through Jesus and the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Lord God, we ask for the understanding and the enlightenment, oh God, of those that are in office, oh God, that, Lord God, for those that operate in lies and deceptions, oh God, Lord God, enlighten their heart, God. Remove them, oh God, from their positions, oh God, so that your word, your your will will reign through, God, in these situations, oh God. Lord God, we ask that you reveal those lies and deceptions that are raging rampant, oh God, in the land, God, that are taken over, God, that are that are manipulating and 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 just shedding shadows, God, on your truth, oh God. Lord God, we ask that you would reveal, oh God, and, and open up, God, for those that are operating with lack of integrity, oh God, that those are operating in deception, God, and lies, God. Lord God, in every aspect of the world, oh God, in every aspect of position and power, God, 
in every aspect, God, that we find ourselves in, oh God. Only you, oh God, can do those things. And Lord, we depend and we lean on you and your strength, oh God, in these times, God. Help us, God, to be the people that you want us to be, God. Lord God, to have humbling hearts, God, that these things that are happening, oh God, that they don't just seem like something else, God, something else happened, that we turn a blind eye to it, oh God, but that we earnestly seek your face, oh God. Lord God, that we earnestly reach out to you and pray, God, and, and that we earnestly go about and do the things that we have in our power to help and change those things, God, that we won't sit with our mouths closed, oh God, with our eyes shut, oh God, with our hands tied, oh God, and not move toward what you would have us to do, oh God. Lord God, we just seek your face for movement, oh God, in this place. Movement, God, that we will act on your word, oh God, that we will act in your truth, oh God, that we will act and depend and lean on what you have told us, God, in your word. Lord God, that we won't become susceptible to these lies and these deceptions, God. We won't allow these killings, God, to be the order of the day, God, that we will show compassion, God, that we will live in love, oh God, that we will act in love, oh God, and in compassion, God, for one another, oh God. Lord God, we just ask for you to move, oh God, like only you can, oh God, touch Lord God, in each and every situation, like only you can. Lord God, we, we honor you and we thank you, oh God, for this day. We honor you and we thank you, God, for this moment to be able to come to you to get today, God, and to pray to you today. We thank you, oh God, for your son, Jesus, who died for us. We thank you, oh God, for the comforter, the Holy Spirit, oh God, that came to comfort us, God. And Lord God, we just need that comfort, God. We need that love, oh God. We need that protection, oh God, that only you can give. We honor you and we thank you today, oh God. And we ask that you would just do anew, oh God, in this land, in us, oh God, and in our lives today. We honor you and we thank you, oh God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
thank God for um, prayer time that we can call on the Lord. And yes, it needs to be exposed. It needs to be opened up. It needs to be uncovered. Conviction needs to be um, done. And we pray that the Holy Spirit will convict the hearts of those who are resting in deception and deceit, lies and cover up. And then we pray for some repentance that some folks would turn around and agree with the Lord that that is not of him. Amen, amen, and amen. We thank Deacon Denisha um, Sorrell. It is preaching time, and we need a word from the Lord today. We need a word every day, but we need a word from the Lord today because if he don't answer, we won't know what to do. We want him to speak because his word is set to convict us. His word was set to um, heal us. His word was sent to um, cut down to the very marrow of the bones. So don't get mad. Don't get mad when the word convicts you, when the word spells out the truth and it's right there oops up in your face you say lord i need that i, I need to hear the truth i kind of start misstepping and bumping my head against the wall i started wanting to seek positions and titles and lead leadership oh my and yet i don't want to obey your word that will never work. It's not coupled together. We must be obedient. And so it's word time. We're going to conclude Isaiah chapter um, 41. And I'm just going to go back to verse 14 for review and go to, um, to the end. Turn with me to Isaiah 41. Today, we desire to conclude the matter. And after reading, we will hear the sermonic um, hymn. I will pray, and it's word time. Somebody say, it's word time. It's time for the word. Amen. Fear not, thou word worm Jacob and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt fan them and the wind shall carry them away and the whirlwind shall scatter them and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none in their tongue faileth for thirst. I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers and high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water in thy dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar the shittai tree, and the myrtle, myrtle. And the oil tree I will set in the desert, the fir tree and the pine, the box tree together, that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord have done this and the Holy One of Israel hath created it. Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reason, saith the king of Jacob. Let them bring them forth and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things what they be, that we may consider them and know the latter end of them or declare us things for to come. Show the things that are to come hereafter that ye may know that ye are gods, yea, 
do good or do evil that ye may be dismayed and behold it together. Behold, ye are of nothing and your work of naught. An abomination in he that chooses you. I have raised up one from the north, and he shall come from the rising of the sun, shall he call upon my name. And he shall come upon princes as upon mortar, as the potter treadeth clay. Who have declared from the beginning that ye may know, and before time that ye may stay. He is righteous, yet there is none that show of ye, there is none, ye that declare of ye, there is none that heareth your words. The first shall say to Zion, behold, behold them, and I will give to Jerusalem one that bringeth good tidings. For I behold that there was no man even among them. And there was no counselor that when I asked of them could answer a word, behold, they are all vanity. Their words, their works, I'm sorry, are nothing. Their mortal images are wind and confusion. Thus ended the reading of the word of Isaiah chapter 41, verses 14 through twenty. Nine. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we bless and praise your name this day that we can call on you, the righteous one. We thank you again that you have privileged us to sit at the table where the feast of you, Lord, is going on. That we may dine of the delectable meal that you prepared for us, for your word is good and mm, good. Lord God, we confess that we have sinned and fallen short. But Lord, we need a word from you. If you don't answer, Lord God, we just won't know what to do. Speak, Lord, today. Speak, Lord, we pray. Lord, we need a word from you. Touch these thy people's ears that they would hear what you have to say to them, the church. We ask that you would touch their hearts. Open up their hearts, convict their hearts, Lord God. Be gracious unto them, Lord God, that they would receive your word. They would hear your voice and not a stranger's voice to follow. And I pray now, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would pour out your spirit upon me. That I would preach this, your unadulterated word, oh God, to your glory and to your honor. That I would encourage these thy people, Lord God, never to entertain, to instruct and not to impress, no matter who is on the line. And that I would proclaim your word to the utmost and never to perform. Because we know and we declare this is not entertainment time nor comedy hour. As I speak this disclaimer, Lord, I thank you now. Speak, Holy Spirit. You are the teacher. Teach me how now to give this to thy people in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen for the Simonic hymn. And I will then preach. He chose me. We didn't choose him.
should be asking him that we may serve him. Ask him, Lord, search my heart so that I may be used. I want to be used by thee. I'm not worthy of all these blessings, but Lord, give me a clean heart that I'll follow thee. That that's the challenge for this week. Asking the Lord to give you a clean heart that you won't run after other things. Isaiah chapter 41, beginning at verse 14, I'm going to review for just a few moments as the Spirit may guide me. Fear not, ye worm, Jacob, you men of Israel. The idea of a worm is connected to the name Jacob, but the idea of men is connected with the name Israel. The name Jacob as applied to Israel here always points back to Israel's lowly and deceitful past. So deception is not new and deception is past just Genesis with Eve and, and Adam. But you see here, it always points back to Israel's lowly and deceitful past so that it is by no means an honor. Why are the Israelites called a worm? To signify that as the worm does not smite, that is, it gnaws the cedars, but with its mouth, which is very tender, yet it nevertheless destroys the hard wood. So all the strength of the Israelites is in prayer by which they smite the wicked of this world. Those strong like cedars to which they are compared. We know that the worm will destroy the hard um, wood. We don't want to operate in deception and deceitfulness and lies because it, it will destroy and your redeemer, redeemer is Goel, see Isaiah 35 and 9, the next of kin who takes upon himself his people's needs as if they were his own. So we thank God this morning and we praise him that he is our redeemer, our kinsman. Behold, I will make you into a new threshing sledge. God will so help Israel and so empower them that they will be able to cut down mountains as if they were a great threshing machine. We know a threshing machine on the surface is very smooth and hard. Oxen and cattle um, tread respectfully. In the Old Testament and the New Testament is a symbol of of judgment but he said that we'll be able because he'll empower us to cut down mountains as if they were a great threshing machine removing mountains seeing their dust blow away in biblical days no machinery was as great as the threshing machine it separated the grain from the husk, the straw, and the beaten. And it was beaten 
manually. The, the point here is clear. Nothing, not even a mountain, will stand in the way of God's people when God helps them. And that's what we have to remember. God is our help. Nobody else. God is our help. I don't know of any other than the creator himself who could take a weak worm and make it sharp with teeth. God can do that. Somebody say, God can do that. He can take a weak worm and make it sharp with teeth. God can do those things in our lives. He, he can help us and empower us. But as the prayer said this morning, the prayer said this morning, but we can't do this ourselves. We need him. We can't do any of this ourselves. We think that we can, but we can't. Jesus expressed the same idea in Matthew 17, 20. If you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there and it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you if we fear not. If we trust in the living God. Then Isaiah goes on to say, you shall rejoice in the Lord and glory in the Holy One of Israel. When we overcome great obstacles with the help of the Lord, we know it is his work. It is not us. We rejoice in the Lord, not in ourselves. We didn't do this. God did. We weren't able. God is. We can't do anything in of ourselves, but we can do everything in Christ Jesus who strengthens us. We have to glory in the Holy One of Israel, not our, in ourselves. When people ask us, how was that done? How did... Well, how are we able to do that? We can't say, I did it because, I did it because, I did it because. We have to say, I was able to do it. And I'm I'm rejoicing in the Lord and glory in him because it was he and he alone that did it. And then we, last week also, was taught that we can fear not because God has abundant resources what did he promise them i will open rivers in desolate heights in response to the cry of the poor and needy those whose tongues fail for thirst god sends miraculous supplies of water to them the old folks used to say he may not come when you want him to but he's always on time because God is timeless. He doesn't set things in motion because we say it should be so. We learned last Wednesday in Bible said the Lord never is in a rush. We may want him to do it right this moment, right this hour, right this day, but he's going to do it in his own time and in his own way that he may get all of the glory and the honor and the praise he's telling them i'll open rivers in desolate heights because we know in desolate heights there is no flowing waters but god sends miraculous supplies of water to them his people god has resources and supplies we know nothing about and he loves to supply us from his hidden resources he can do the exceedingly abundantly above more than we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. If you don't think he can do anything, it won't happen. If you don't think that he is a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, way maker, then he won't be that for you. We have to believe. And he went on to say, I will plant in the wilderness the cedar and the acacia tree. God will also make barren places fruitful. If you're feeling barren today, if you're feeling like, 
Um, you're depleted. I, I plead, I beg of you to drink from the water that will never run dry. That's what he told the woman at the well when she going to ask him, how you going to ask me about the water? Uh, our, our father Jacob built these wells, but he told her, listen, woman, listen, listen, Linda, listen. The water that I have, the living waters that I have, you drink from that water, you shall never run dry. God can take the most barren wilderness and make it a forest just like in our lives when we are feeling abandoned and barren and in the wilderness, I dare you today to try Jesus. He satisfies. Jesus can do what no other power can do. Water and shade are the two great needs of the desert together. None of the trees mentioned are fruit trees. The point is shelter and subsidies. We'll know that the hand of the Lord has done this. And the Holy One of Israel has created it. When it all takes place, everyone will know this. Miraculous supplies of water and forests in the wilderness are impossible without God. So he gets the glory when the work is done. When it all takes place, y'all hear me new day today and all of those who worship with us everyone will know this miraculous supplies of water and forest in the wilderness are impossible without god but nothing is impossible with him so he gets the glory when the work is done and today i'm glad that he chose me and we didn't choose him. And so let's go to the 21st verse and hear what the spirit has to say through the prophet Isaiah. Idolatry is on trial here. Here in this 21st verse, God is calling idols and their worshipers to trial. He said, present your case, says the Lord. Bring forth your strong reason, says the king of Jacob, present your case. God is fair. He will not condemn idols, the false gods of the nation, and those who worship them without a fair trial. We've heard of people in the last year that have gotten out of prison because their trials have been overturned because they didn't get a fair trial. Evidence was not brought forth rightfully that would have given the person an opportunity to not be condemned and um, judged unfairly because they were innocent. So God is saying, present your case. He's not going to condemn the idols or the false gods of the nation, those who worship them without a fair trial. So he invites these idols and these worshipers to come and present your case. In other words, Daddy God has said, let's hear your side of the story. Bring forth your strong reasons. Let's hear your best arguments. God will not condemn without a fair trial. He said, bring forth your strong reasons. Let's hear your side of the story. Let me hear what you got to say. And that's why I said early, and I repeat again today, we cannot justify lies. We can't dwell in deceit and um, cover up. Because God is going to answer us, bring, bring your strong reasons. Let's see your side of the story, why you are worshiping everything and everybody else that is not God. You worshiping your little idols. 
And the Bible says, says the king of Jacob. This is the only place in the Bible where God uses this title. The king of Jacob is used only here, nowhere else. In this verse, it says the king says the king of Jacob. That's the only place where God uses this title, king of Jacob. But the title king of Israel is used more than 138 times in the Bible, mostly of men. But here's something you may not know today. But of the Lord God in Isaiah 44, 6 and Zephaniah 3, 15. And of Jesus in John chapter 1, verse 29 and 49 and chapter 12, verse 13. King of Jacob is only used once, that title. But the title King of Israel is used more than 138 times. Mostly of men, but the Lord God in Isaiah in 44, verse 6, Zephaniah 3, verse 15 of Jesus in John chapter 1, verse 49, and John chapter 12, verse 13. The Lord God, the title king of Israel, is given. And so God won't condemn before he gives you a, a fair trial. You got to come bringing forth your, your, your strong reasons. You, you got to come and tell him what's up. Why are you doing what you're doing? And look at verses 20 through 2 to 24. God examines the defendants, the idols, and their worshipers at the trial. Let them bring forth God invited idols to present their case in Isaiah 41, 21. But none is presented. So God will not judge before he gives you a fair trial. And then here he examines the defendants. He's telling them, let's bring forth. Let them come forth, but none is presented. The next words are God's question of the idols. He's saying, in verses 22 to 24, why don't the idols present their case and defend themselves? And you know why? Because they are dumb statues that can't speak. So the question moves on and God examines the defendants. God examines the defendants, the idols and the worshipers at the trial. Let them bring forth and show us what will happen. If these idols really are gods, then they certainly know the future and the past. God is saying, then let them speak up. See, if that's your idol, that is your husband, your wife, your children, your grandchildren, your godchildren, your cousins, your aunties, your uncles, if they are really gods, then they should know the future and the past. He said, let them speak up. Show us what will happen. Then let them show the former things, what they were. God knows these things, don't they? Do it that we may know that you are gods. So he, he examines the defendants the idols and the worshipers at trial. And he's giving them a chance to present their case. And he's saying, if you're really gods, not God, but gods, then you ought to know the future and the past. You know how old people used to say, Miss Know-It-All, Mr. Know-It-All, you know so much, tell us. Do it that we may know that you are gods. God is saying, I know these things, but if you are gods, I'm God. I know these things, but if you are gods, tell it so that we'll know that you are. He said, yes, do good or do evil. It's as if God stands in a courtroom questioning a thousand idols of different sizes and divine uh, designs and finally cries out, do something. 
do good or do evil, can't you do anything? <laughs> God got them on trial. He's asking them, thousands of them, different sizes and designs. He's standing in the courtroom and saying, do something. Can't you do anything but hear these idols and these idol worshipers, indeed you are nothing. They cannot do anything. So the accusations made based upon the evidence, God doesn't falsely accuse them. He's not falsely accusing. He said, your work is nothing. He who chooses you is an abomination because you can't do anything. And I'm here to tell you today, my brothers and sisters, idolatry is still today an abomination. Today, idolatry is still an abomination. Though few people bow down to statues, many still fashion a God of their own opinion and decide that is the God that they will respect. Today, idolatry is still an abomination. Though few bow down to, to statues, many still fashion a God of their own opinion. But my opinion is, I decided I'm going to. You haven't checked with God's word, not for a moment. And then this is here what we say. I, I, I heard him. I heard him tell me. Now, you're not in no meditation space. You're not in prayer time. But you're going to say, you heard him tell you these things. No, most time it's your own opinion. And you deciding that is the God that you'll respect. Many churchgoers do it this today. The spiritual conflict experienced today is exactly of the same nature and of the same character as you find here in Isaiah 41. The issue is still unsettling in the minds of men though it is settled eternally in the mind of God, the world is still making every effort to put the best possible show upon its worship of the creature rather than the creator. Its worship is more the patronizing of the shell of religion than bow in humble submission before an empty cross and an occupied throne and the king of kings in glory. We, we don't want to bow in humble submission. We don't want to tell God I have sinned and fallen short. We want to point a finger and say that it's everybody else that has done this, but I haven't sinned. I haven't fallen short. I, I can turn this idol on or turn it off at will. And God is saying, indeed, you are nothing and your work is nothing. He's telling these idolaters and the worshipers. Paul quoted this idea in 1 Corinthians 8 and 4 when he wrote, Therefore, concerning the eating of things offered to idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is no other God but one. Paul got it right over in the New Testament. He linked and joined with Isaiah and Isaiah 41 saying to the idols and the idol worshipers, you are nothing and your work is nothing. And then he goes on to conclude in verses 25 to 29. Are you with me today? Here's the Lord's summation. Here's what the Lord says about idols and worshiping of idols and having idols which are really dumb um statues and in today's time there it's about our opinion and deciding that is the god that we're going to respect here's the lord's summation idols are worth worthless and man is so limited idols are worthless y'all hear me 
and man is so limited. Idols are worthless. They don't have no value. They don't have no value. And man is limitless. Limited, I'm sorry. Idols are worthless and man is so limited. I don't know what makes us think that we're bigger than God. I don't know what makes us think that we got it all going on. But God says after these verses 25 through 29, I have raised up one from the north and he shall come. In contrast to the idols who can tell nothing of the future, the Lord knows. And I'm so glad this morning that he knows the beginning, the middle, and the end. He knows about yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He knows that he will bring Cyrus from the north to conquer the Babylonians who conquered Judah and Jerusalem and took them captive. God will use Cyrus to allow the Jews in exile to return. Cyrus has the greatest respect for Jehovah as we can read in his proclamation concerning the freeing of Israel in Ezra chapter one. In it, he states correctly that Jehovah has given him all the kingdoms of the earth. The north is included because the Persians conquered the land north of Babylon before invading their borders. Who has declared from the beginning that we may know not the idols, say not the idols. I don't care how smart you think your idols are. I don't think you, I, I don't care how great you think your idols are. Yes, look, look at America that have always been, since it's been America, the most mightiest force, the most powerful um, country in the land, but it's becoming not so. Who has declared from the beginning that we may know not the idols, they know nothing, not man. For I looked and there was no man. God is telling us today to return unto him. Listen, Pilate and Herod, they thought that um, their, their opinions and, and, and their way was the great mighty way in order to conquer, in order to condemn, in order to crucify our Lord. The crowd thought that they were such big shots. They, they they hollered out crucify the innocent one and yet they wanted to release the known criminal today. They knew that Barabbas was a criminal and had done all wrong. But because God had already set it in motion, he knew the past and the future. He knew that his son was going to go and be hung on an old rugged cross. He knew that his son was going to feel abandoned and rejected of him. But Jesus paid the price for us because we would not have been able to handle and accomplish that mission. But Jesus, tell somebody, it was Jesus, not an idol. It was Jesus, not a dummy statue. It was Jesus, a living man who suffered, bled, and died on that old rugged cross, taken down to be put in a borrowed tomb. But early the first day of the week, Jesus arose like a mighty trump. He arose. He rose from uh, as a victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, he arose. And because he lives, he chose me and we did not choose 
him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be unto God. I'm glad that Jesus is the one. And God said that he would raise up. He told those idols and idol worshipers, I got one that I'm going to raise up. And he will be the greatest in all of the land. In all of heaven and earth. He will sit beside me in all righteousness and glory and be your advocate. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord God. Why don't you come today? Why don't you be able to grasp hold that he chose you and that you're not choosing him? You're not finding him because he's not lost this morning. But he's standing at the door and he knocked. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man would open up the door, I'll come in and stop with him. So why don't you today sit a man, woman, boy, or girl? Letting us know, I want to know more of this Jesus. The Bible says, if you confess me, believe that God raised him from the dead. You speak it, you're saved. So why don't you today? Crisis team at ndcoc.org will answer your email. The gospel with you. The plan of salvation that God set in motion through his son, Jesus. And then those of you who have backslidden, those of you who have ran after and chased after idols, those of you that have collected idols, and you think that that's what's going to help you and give you hope. No, I'm telling you today that Jesus is the only answer for you and for me. Won't you come today? Again, send us an email and we'll be happy to send you the crisis team who will talk with you and pray with you in your backslidden state. And those of you who have or drifted away you relocated but you said well it's a pandemic and we've been kind of locked in and shut out and so i don't need to really i can wait a little while longer and get reunited with the church in a different location but i invite you today because as a sinner as one backslidden or one that's relocated New Day Church family will be happy to have you as a family member, and I would be hallelujah happy to serve as your under shepherd, as your pastor, guided by the Holy Spirit to help guide you from earth to glory. Won't you come today? Jesus is tenderly and earnestly calling calling for you today won't you come won't you come come on i wouldn't wait not another moment not another day not another second i just would not take the risk little nine year old girl here in virginia playing outside with four of her other friends shot because a group of teenagers was shooting at someone else over top of them and caught her with the bullet. Those people that went into the supermarket didn't know that that's where their life would end. Those children and, and that teacher, two hours after such a joyful, gleeful awards assembly, many of those children receiving honor roll certificates, good citizenship certificates, perfect attendance uh, badges. And two hours later, 
dead. And even those that are resting in the hospital from their afflictions and inflictions of what has happened to them, you still have time. Why don't you come today? I wouldn't put it off no more. I would say this is the day that I'm giving my life to Jesus and I'm letting go of the idols and the idol worship in my life. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I have done what he has commanded me to do. I have given you the word of God today. Have a great week. We'll see you on Wednesday, Lord will, for Life in the Word Bible Study. We're beginning another number of Psalm on Wednesday. So why don't you meet us at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we'll be delighted to see you. Go in peace and be blessed.